keeping your hosts alive. High availability, redundancy in VMware. What are we talking about? We're gonna be covering that in this video. Essentially, you've got an ESXi host. You want that ESXi host to stay up as long as you can because it's running a whole bunch of VMs, a whole bunch of virtual machines on there. What happens if that ESXi host goes down? Well, you're gonna lose all of the VMs that are running on that ESXi host unless you have your environment, your VMware environment set up in what's called a highly available zone with high availability and redundancy. So if one host dies with all of your VMs, another host can pick up the slack and then you have your VMs up and running again, and you don't have that outage period. So of course, to have this, of course, running, you're gonna need a pool of ESXi hosts. You're gonna need servers, desktops, laptops set up with ESXi. We're gonna be doing this on ESXi version eight, but the whole process will also work on earlier versions of ESXi as well. And these all need to be part of a vCenter environment. And then you can set up and configure HA, high availability across your cluster that will then get all your ESXi hosts working the way that they should, and your VM's not going away if a host dies. Let's now cross over to our computer and we're gonna go through how to set all of this up. Two things, FT and HA. FT being fault tolerance, HA being high availability. These are two features that are available within vCenter. Let's firstly talk about high availability. As the name suggests, it's making sure that your environment is highly available. In the event that you have an outage of some sort, a physical switch is disconnected, or an ESXi host is turned off or goes down, you want those VMs that are running on that host to be highly available and relocate to another ESXi host. Now this ties in very, very closely to vMotion. So you're gonna to need to have vMotion set up on every single host that you wanna be available as part of high availability. The other thing is making sure that you're setting this up on a cluster level. So all the VMs that you want to be highly available, the hosts that you want to be highly available should be part of the same cluster. Right over here, I've got two hosts. I've got 103, I've got 104. 103 has a whole bunch of VMs, 104 has a whole bunch of VMs, and they're part of the production cluster. So what I'm gonna to wanna to happen is let's say 103 is a, is a host that you know struggles a little bit. From time to time, it's had some crashes, it's had some issues, and you're not so sure about it, but you're okay to run some VMs onto there. 104 runs not too bad. Wouldn't it be great is in the event that 103 went down, all the VMs that were running on 103 actually migrated over and then powered on on 104 automatically without you having to do anything. Because if you did not have high availability available, then what would happen is if 103, if the physical host goes down, every VM that is running, every server that is running on that 103 host will go down with it. So where do we do this? Well, we do this on the production cluster, on the actual cluster level itself with my hosts running within it. I'm gonna right click on my cluster right over here and I'm gonna go into settings. You'll notice that configure opened. Here we've got a few different options available around the configuration of my cluster. You'll notice that there's a whole bunch of stuff in here available around your cluster. vSphere availability, as you can see, vSphere HA is turned off. So runtime information for vSphere HA is reported under here. You can see a little bit of information around here, but I'm gonna now select edit. HA on, right there, done, it's on. Well, let's go through some of the settings first. Enable host monitoring. Well, we wanna see what's going on here. What's this mean? ESXi hosts in this cluster exchange network heartbeats. Disable this feature when performing network maintenance that may cause isolation responses. So what this is trying to say, a heartbeat, it's checking each other. You've got your pulse, you put your finger, you can feel the heartbeat, it lets you know that you're alive. What this is doing is one ESXi host is checking the pulse, the heartbeat of the other host. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? It's gonna be doing that. If it's getting a response, yes, I'm here because you can feel the heartbeat, nothing happens. That's how the ESXi host knows if the other ESXi host has gone down. If the heartbeat is gone, that means the host is down. I need to grab all those VMs and spin them up on my host. So generally you do wanna have that uh, option on, all right? So now what do you wanna happen when the host failure happens? 
Let's say I've got ESXi 103 and 104. They're now part of my high, highly available network and 103 goes down. What do I want to happen with 104 with those VMs? So I've got a few different options. I've got restart VMs, I've got disabled. So I want by default, allows you to configure host monitoring and failover on this cluster, that when a host failure is detected, when a heartbeat is not found, VMs will be restarted in the order determined by their restart priority. We can talk about the restart priority in a little while. Default VM restart priority, medium, high, lowest, high, etc. We'll talk about that in a little while. VM dependency restart conditions. So you can actually say the ordering and based on specific conditions, which VMs should be powered on in what, in what state. After the condition has been met, VMHA will proceed with the next VM restart priority. And then there's a whole other bunch of options. But the key thing here is that at a host failure, you want to restart all the VMs on the other host. What about host failures in the cluster? So let's say you've got a cluster that is made up of 10 hosts. Do you want only one host to fail before it triggers high availability HA and then moves the VMs? Or do you want more than one host to fail? If you change that to two, well, you need two hosts to die before anything happens. You may have reasons for doing that. Heartbeat data stores. Well, the HA uses data stores to monitor hosts and virtual machines when the HA network has failed. And you can also monitor that on a data store level. And because both of my hosts, 103 and 104, are connected to Aguero NAS, I can also enable my heartbeat against my data store. Nice feature. So we are gonna turn that on. So it's almost like a second level of heartbeat available to you and some further advanced options which will not change. Okay, if we're happy with all of that, let's go ahead and say okay. Noticing the task down the bottom that we are configuring HA. HA is now turned on. What's proactive HA? Proactive HA is, at the, as the name suggests, it's gonna proactively check for things and enable HA. So what it's gonna be doing is it's gonna be checking perhaps the health of your hosts. Are there signs on your ESXi hosts that may lead to it failing. Maybe there's some hardware issues. Maybe the CPU has been playing up. And it's going to go, oh, it looks like the CPU may fail. So I'm going to proactively enable HA and move the VMs to protect them from actually powering down. Now, this is the one thing that you need to be aware of is standard HA, it doesn't ensure that the VMs will not have an outage. Because remembering, the VMs are powered on, on your host. They're running Windows, they're running Linux, whatever they're running. If the host fails, what happens is the other host in your cluster or hosts in your cluster will then say, oops, that ESXi host has failed. Bring up all these VMs on my new host, on me, on my host. Start them up because what's happened is you've just essentially pulled the plug on that ESXi host so all the VMs will shut down. They're like being powered off. So if you've got something critical, if it's a production issue, so if those VMs lose power, you've lost access to those VMs. And they will stay off until they are powered back on on your new ESXi host. So you are going to experience an outage. So let's say you've got a file server on one of the hosts and the power is cut. It now needs to trigger HA. It's going to start up that file server on the new host and that file server will be turned off that windows will be turned off until it's come back up on the new host so it doesn't guarantee that the vms will have no outage proactive ha may allow the vm to move from one host to another vmotion one host from one to another automatically using drs which we'll talk on in a little bit and that will then prevent that VM from being turned off because your host is not physically being power cut. That's the main differences there. So as it says right here, that proactive HA will require DRS to be turned on. DRS is a feature that will cover, but essentially vMotioning VMs from one to another automatically. So you're gonna enable some things to enable DRS and it's gonna be checking your host all the time anyway for resources and be moving VMs over as it needs to. And that's what proact proactive HA essentially piggybacks 
on top of the DRS feature. All right. And here are some features that you can see. We've got host failure, restart VMs, proactive HA is turned off, host isolation is turned off, etc. So we're going to look at maybe turning on proactive HA once you've got DRS up and running, but it's a completely optional feature to you. But that is now ready to go from a HA perspective. HA is now done, it's ready. You could literally go and test it. You could go and shut down one of those hosts. You could pull the power, you could unplug the network cable. It's gonna go, oh, the heartbeat is not no longer there. It's gonna now spin up all those VMs on the other side, okay? That's high availability, that's HA. What if you've got some VMs that you cannot afford to have any outage whatsoever? That's where fault tolerance comes into place. And what fault tolerance does is it ensures that a VM will never be powered off. If you remember with high availability, if the host goes down, the VM goes down with it and then needs to spin up on that new host. Fault tolerance ensures that that VM never goes out. And how does it achieve this? Well, what it does is you select specific VMs that you wanna be part of this fault tolerance protection. You can only select specific VMs. It's not like you're doing it on the full cluster. You need to go and allocate a number of critical business, critical VMs that you cannot afford to go down. Perhaps they're like domain controllers, database servers, a web server. You don't want those to ever go down. So you wanna go and set those VMs to be turned on with fault tolerance. And then what's gonna happen is you will then have, let's say two hosts. I've got 103 and 104 right over here. And you're gonna go and select the VMs in there that you want to enable with fault tolerance. And there'll always be a copy of that VM running on 104. So let's say 103, I've got this AGUDC01 that is running on ESXi 103. And that is critical to me, it's critical to the business. So what I'm gonna select is I'm gonna say that I want DC01 to be available for fault tolerance. So what's gonna happen is fault tolerance will configure that DC01 accordingly and create a copy of it also running on 104. So there are now two copies running. One will be a live copy. The other one will be a copy that is just in an off state, always ready to go, always kept up to date in the event that the first one goes down, the second one just turns on, no outage. That's essentially how it works. It's almost like a standby version of that VM running on another host. Now to enable this feature, you're literally gonna go and right click and select fault tolerance and you can turn that fault tolerance on. You are gonna have to go and configure and actually have a physical NIC set up, almost similar to what we've done with the v VM kernel port, for what's called fault tolerance logging. So you are gonna to have to set up some additional infrastructure so you can actually take advantage of fault tolerance on there. Now, one other note is that fault tolerance generally needs another license. It's not gonna come out of the box, perhaps with the lower end vCenter license that you may be purchasing. There you have high availability fault tolerance. So why don't you let us know what your environment looks like? How many ESXi hosts do you have? Do you have a big pool? Do you have a small pool? And hopefully now you understand a little bit more about high availability in VMware and how to keep those VMs up and running. And also click that subscription button on the bell. I release videos every week on all things tech, including VMware, so you don't wanna miss out. We'll see you on the next one.